The original Star Wars movies borrowed from earlier iconic imagery in order to create the look of the movie. With clones, it's just whatever they could shove in there from varying unrelated sources. Even taking things from the previous films. You see, in May of 2000, Lucas must have seen Gladiator and decided that he also wanted an arena in his movie. But his was gonna be bigger and better. -er. Then I guess there was an attempt to outdo Ridley Scott even more by making a futuristic city that was much bigger and better than the one in Blade Runner. My computers are better than yours. The line between paying homage and ripping off starts to blur at this point, but the worst is yet to come when clones begin stealing things from Empire. At some point, someone told George Lucas that the second act in a three-act dramatic structure is when all the characters are at their lowest point. I think he learned this after the people who knew what they were doing made Empire Strikes Back, because he seems to attempt to copy a lot of that movie in Episode 2. Unsuccessfully, I might add. Now what do I mean by lowest point? Well, typically a story is divided into three acts. The first act sets everything up. The second act puts the characters through some challenges, i.e. the drama. In the third act, they begin to work against the problem and ultimately overcome it. If you look at each trilogy as its own contained story, then the second film should be the darkest one. Empire pulled this off perfectly, of course. Because I love Empire so much I f*** it. In episode 2, nothing like that really happens. Nothing much happens at all, except for you could say they get the clones, I guess. It's a colorful mishmash of stuff that happens that bridges the gap between Episode 1 and Episode 3. However, Lucas lifts a lot of the iconic elements and imagery from Empire and shoves it into this film wherever he can. This is just to form some kind of connection with the franchise's best film, and to make it seem like this is the darkest chapter of the new trilogy. First off, it's love. Empire had the subtext of romance in the darkest of times. Clones attempts to recreate that but fails in every way possible. Then while having a much different story, Attack of the Clones borrows so many visuals from the Empire it's comical. Some so subtle you might not have even noticed. But your brain did. Leia and Padme are both dressed in white. A sequence in an asteroid belt. Things that look like Bespin ships. The fast paced low cavernous reveal shot. Boba Fett appears in both films. Sticking your ship onto something else to avoid detection by scanners. A city above the clouds. A city above the water. Space junk floats out the back of a ship. Slave 1 tracks a ship. And a ship tracks Slave 1. C-3PO gets taken apart in an industrial conveyor belt type place and R2-D2 drags him around. A plastic tube gets cut in half by a lightsaber and there's an attempt to recreate the smoky, dim conditions of the Empire duel. Anakin loses his arm, Luke loses his hand. Falling. And then it ends pretty much on the same shot. C-3PO and R2-D2 are both there, and there's the reveal of the robot hand. Again, it's like poetry, so if they rhyme... Thank you, I got it. Every stanza got it. rhymes with the last okay, one. Okay, got it. Thanks. Hopefully Stop. It'll work. Stop. Then there was one last thing I wanted to mention. After finally working up the courage to tell Han that she loves him, and exposing her true feelings, Leia fears that she might have lost him forever. There's a last ditch effort to save him, but they're too late. She watches the ship fly off. This could be the last she ever sees of Han Solo, the man she loves. It's pretty heartbreaking and filled with a lot of heavy emotions. In Clones, a similar type of thing happens. Padme fires at a fleeing ship on a landing platform. Someone named Count Dooku was on it, who's going to do something. Certainly not getting misty-eyed over this. If you compare Empire with clones in this way, you can see a vast difference from the realism of actual locations and sets to the phony, plastic, cartoony, unrealistic environments. From a real Yoda who was there to teach us things about the Force to a fake-looking computer Yoda who was there to do video game shit. And most importantly, a love story that felt like real people that we grew to care about, struggling in a tough situation, but rather characters we are told we should like, with no more depth than a cardboard cutout projected against a fake background. For my ally is the Force. 
and the powerful qualities. Life creates it. I need a midichlorian count. Makes it grow. The reading is off the chart. Its energy surrounds us. Over 20,000. And binds us. Even Master Yoda doesn't have a midichlorian count that high. Luminous beings are we, not this crude matter. This weapon is your life. You must feel the force around you. Yes. With the new digital technology and everything, I'm pretty much, whatever I can imagine, I can do. We have clones and droids and flying termites and rockets taking off, flying gunships, ground troops, 200 Jedi. There's some really good action in this movie. Uh, people are getting wiped out, man. There's some wipeouts in this movie. And then they get trapped into this droid factory. We see Jedi in large battle scenes, you know, battling as a large group. And before, we've never seen that before. There's always been a couple of Jedi fighting each other. These are the real flaws of the prequels. Not the tiny nitpicking about things, but the major problems. Every single frame, every single shot in the movie has a digital effect. Pretty much every set has blue screen, even if it's just out a window or something. It's everywhere. Uh, I think I've been on one set where there hasn't been any blue screen. The, the guy who's creating that character will create their responses off what, how you respond to their responses that aren't there. It's a nightmare. <laughs> when you suck out the humanity from the films and replace it with the ease of digital filmmaking, well, it just sucks. Do my, do my, do my.